Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and in today's video I'm going to be unboxing and reviewing the Redmi Pad SE. So we just have a quick look at the specs here. But without wasting any time, let's get straight into this unboxing. So the box just has your usual information around the sides and stuff with branding. Let's get this cellophane plastic off the box itself. Peel that back. Nice compact box so far I have to say and then we've got the tablet sitting here on the top in this kind of soft touch paper velvet little box to flip open on this side we've got your user guide and warranty information then we have a tray injector which is for the SD card and we also have a USB-C cable which is a good length and then the 10 watt charging brick Put that stuff all back and get this box out of the way. Peel this off the tablet and pop that out. So getting into the design and build, you can see here that it weighs 478 grams and it's got an aluminium alloy unibody design. It comes in these colours, so graphite grey, which one I have. And then looking on the right hand side, we have the volume rocker buttons, we have a microphone, and the SD card tray. Let's have a quick look at that. Around the bottom we have the two speakers, the USB-C charging port and the headphone jack. To the left nothing and then on the top we have the Dolby Atmos branding with the two speakers and the power button. On the front we have the selfie camera and then around the back we have the 8 megapixel camera. No flashlight. Redmi branding there at the bottom and then your regulatory information but nice metal premium feeling so feels good in the hand it's got a nice weight to it so jumping into the display we've got 11 inch full HD display on here which is at 207 ppi running at 90 hertz and we've got these certifications low blue light and flicker free so we can see it dims quite low and then Brightness goes up to 400 nits, I believe. If you just jump into the settings quickly, we just have your generic kind of settings here. Dark mode, reading mode, kind of just gives a screen a warmer tone. And you can pick from your color scheme if you want it to be more vibrant, more saturated. Uh, we also have refresh rate options. So obviously you can stick to 60 hertz or have it go up to 90. So I'm going to leave it on that. Then we just have your text size and other bits and bobs. So I'm going to test it out with the stylus that I've got on AliExpress. It's just a cheap stylus but works absolutely fine from what I can see so far. So we'll just have a look at some of the specs. Some colour testing, grayscale, some text, what it looks like on the tablet. Plenty sharp, no problem there. Viewing angles, decent, good enough I guess. Slight shift in brightness but nothing too drastic let's check out this stylus on here seems to work absolutely fine there is a bit of lag but obviously this pad isn't designed for a stylus so to speak so that's kind of expected and then a palm rejection test I'll just have a quick look at and it worked but you can see my palm was leaving some marks there but still gets the job done so we've got security level one for wide wine so we're going to get full hd playback on netflix and other apps and then here's some footage and this is 4k but obviously resolution on here was 1080p max but still looks nice colors look good plenty sharp just a quick shot outside in daylight to see obviously you're going to have reflectivity issues and then we'll just show you some avatar footage here. Looks good. So for media consumption, absolutely no problem. And then we see Netflix, full HD playback, obviously no HDR support. Just playing Godzilla vs Kong here. Some Rick and Morty. Always have to go to Rick and Morty. So for me, the screen is really good. Moving on to performance with this tablet's rocking the Snapdragon 680 and it's got the Adreno 610 chip 
four gigabytes of RAM and six and eight are available in other regions. And then here's some information on the memory reading. So a bit dated there, but still okay. And we can see some more information on the tablet here itself. And we also have memory extension, so you can choose to pick that, which is just virtual RAM. And a lot of people are doing that nowadays. Benchmarks, moving on to Geekbench here. Respectable score for uh, this kind of chip. Moving on to PC Mark, we can see the work performance score here. Again, reasonable, nothing to write home about. And this is a read and write test, so you can see the speeds there if you're interested in that. And then just generally moving around the tablet, like I said, it's a mid range slash entry level chip, so you're not going to get blazing fast speeds or super for performance. But for what the chip is, gets the job done. You might get a little delay in apps opening here and there. Animations, obviously, with the 90 hertz look nice and smooth, but just a bit of processing behind them might make them stutter a little, but. Nothing too drastic, so absolutely fine. Just jumping around the different apps here, so you get an idea of speed times. Obviously, data speeds, Wi Fi speeds are influential in this as well. Let's hop into YouTube, see how long that takes. It's just a few seconds, so nothing drastic, but still, I have seen obviously faster than this. So let's just jump into gaming performance. Um, my go to Call of Duty Mobile, we can see we've got graphics very high, but then frame rate. If you switch that to high, it'll drop the graphics to low, so we'll just leave that. And then, absolutely fine with gameplay. The graphics look nice on it, colours look nice. I didn't notice any lagging or stuttering in the gameplay itself. If you play games on a tablet, then you'd have no problem. So I'm running Genshin Impact here, and this worked absolutely fine as well. This is quite a graphically intense game itself, so I was pleased to see that it was running. And then if we just have a look at split screen on the tablet itself, just so we can get an idea if two apps running together work fine, and I had no problem there. So I'm running Chrome and YouTube with the video playing on the left side. And obviously you can do pop-out screen as well, which is handy multitasking feature but I noticed you can only do one pop-out screen so moving on to audio we're working with quad speakers here Dolby Atmos tunes and we've got high-res audio certification and we obviously have the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack if you want to use that jumping into the settings you can see we can pick from Dolby Atmos or optimized audio quality and then you can have your preferred equalizer from here if you wanted to change that about your own custom one or preset and the speakers are on the sides long ways so when you're holding it in landscape it cups the hand and sounds good with a PPI of 203 and for me as a media consumption device or even <laughs> you two are being a couple of Debbie down there wait until night Jerry reads about this So if we move on to software and connectivity, we got me UiPad 14 on here, which is running on top of Android 13. And to me, it's a clean interface. There's not much bloatware, maybe a few apps, but the operating system seems to run fine, as we as saw in the performance. I don't know what happened there with the background, kind of got a bit jagged. But if we just quickly go to what options we have in settings software-wise, you get your 
information on the multitasking. We can see here security status, so security patches and stuff. We can cast a tablet. You can do demos to external monitor. And there's some more information on the special features that you can do with that. You can obviously do wireless display. Here can my TV's popping up. You have your lock screen stuff, so you know, raise to wake, double tap to wake. And then if you just keep going down, you've got your notifications, customization for each app, the home screen with the app drawer, you can have it classic where all the apps end up on the home screen. And we can kind of dial in there. But moving around is your standard kind of operating system you'd get on a tablet. You know, your multitasking features and stuff. So what I'm used to and it does the job and it works. So for password and security, we just have face unlock and screen lock. So there's no fingerprint reader on this tablet which is a shame, but they obviously decided to keep the costs down. And then additional settings has a few bits in there. You also have digital well-being, so keep an eye on, you know, how much you're using the tablet, what apps you're using. That's good to see. So for anyone who's interested in the cameras, which some people might be, we just have your standard camera layout here, documents, video, photo, night, and then a short video if you wanted to do that. I'll be pulled down from the settings. We've got resolution maximum of 1080p at 30 frames. You can pick your grid lines if you wanted to. Choose your aspect ratio. This is different what I saw, movie aspect ratio. So that's an option if you wanted to shoot in that. And then if you just jump into the settings, it's just your normal stuff, picture quality, mirror, front camera, you know, video encoder. 264-265 and then just your generic things down there if you wanted to change those anti-banding so here's some test footage you can check out So moving on to battery, we have 8,000 milliamp battery with 10 watt charging, which was kind of disappointing. So it takes about four hours to charge. And we can see here 100% charge, it says 42 hours, six minutes remaining. And then we also can jump into battery saving options. So it kind of gives you suggestions on how to extend your battery life, which is good to see. And you can obviously close the apps that are draining your battery. And I obviously had just charged this to 100%, but for my use, it's been absolutely fine. I Run, I managed to play like loads of videos, do my benchmarking, and the battery was really good. Lasted quite a long time. You can see the battery temperature here, and then you have a individual app battery saver, or you can schedule to turn the tablet on and off at a certain time, which is good to see. And I ran the PC mark battery test at 50% brightness with volume at 50% as well. We got 18 hours, 29 minutes, which is really good. So in conclusion, for this tablet, I have to say, falling into the budget category, category, we have quite a lot of contenders in this category now. I recently reviewed the Honor Pad X9, which was another really good tablet for £180, I believe, here in the UK, or £170. But again, that tablet was really, really good for the price. And again, the Redmi Pad SE falls into that category. There's some things that it might be lacking in comp comparison, and this tablet comes in at £200. But you might be able to find it on offers because Xiaomi have loads of offers on all the time. Cameras, obviously what you would expect from a tablet, but still decent. Performance was absolutely fine. You're not going to get the best, best performance out of this, but still good enough to play your, you know, mid graphic intense games. And the display, again, nice colors on there. You can choose to have the more saturated, more neutral if you wanted. So that's absolutely fine. So the media consumption device, absolutely fine for productivity. You saw with the multi-screen and the pop-out windows, you can have some sort of multi-tasking going on. Helps to be able to use a stylus pen in that situation, which worked absolutely fine. And again, that was just a cheap stylus that I managed to buy on AliExpress and it cost me four or five pounds. So that worked fine. Not the best, but still done the job. So for me, this tablet was good. 
I enjoyed my time with it and if you are looking for something that's not going to break the bank, I would recommend getting something like this. Thanks for watching guys, hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Take care.